Hello everybody, Dr. Shadi Rafich here, surgeon at True Care for Pets, Study City, Los Angeles, California. This is Vet Talks, let's pause for a minute. This is where we're going to review a topic of the week uh, in sort of a brief format. And so we're going to be talking about laryngeal paralysis. For those of you who have never heard of it before, we'll get ready. Uh, this is a condition that affects dogs quite commonly, especially as they get older. If you have heard about it before, then you know of course how serious the condition this could be. Laryngeal paralysis affects larger breed dogs. I typically will see it in Labradors, Rottweilers, Boxers, Goldens, um, and also typically they're older. So somewhere in the six year to in their early teens. And it's an insidious condition, meaning that it sort of creeps up on you over time. It'll form over months to years. And the condition is thought to be basically a neurologic one, at least that's what the latest research shows. So if something happens with the nerves that controls laryngeal function, which is basically the vocal cords, and the flaps that make up your vocal cords can no longer operate. And so you end up having a scenario where instead of the vocal cords moving back and forth as you're breathing and uh, let's say barking, whimpering and what have you, um, you instead can't really get air to move. And so you end up feeling like you're suffocating. It's like breathing through a straw. And so the folds that are supposed to be moving back and forth end up just staying closed. And they don't really they don't really open up anymore and if it affects your dog on one side well that's that's called paresis or a partial um, laryngeal paralysis or a unilateral laryngeal paralysis and that is typically a uh, condition that they can live with and it probably starts off that way it starts off affecting one side with a little bit of weakness but not not complete paralysis when you go from paresis to paralysis <clears throat> and you go from unilateral to bilateral meaning affecting both sides that's when you have a situation that the dogs can no longer compensate for. And so they end up coming to us on the emergency side with a high temperature because they can't give off, give, off the, uh, give off the heat as they're trying to breathe. They are suffocating, so they're having trouble breathing, they're gasping for air, and because of that, it creates anxiety and stress, and that of course turns into a, um, a positive feedback loop, a vicious cycle, and they just continue to freak out try to breathe harder, they can't breathe, they freak out more, temperature goes up, they're struggling, and they end up going into shock. Um, and it's gonna happen very, very quickly, as you can imagine. If you try to hold your own breath and see how long you can last for, it's most people with seconds, you know, maybe minutes if you're trained. Um, in dogs like this, they just they start to, to panic and it becomes a, a very quickly a life-threatening condition. So we will typically see them in a set situation where they are struggling to breathe and having, um, um, Life, life-threatening complications from this. And the reason why I say we believe it's neurologic is because there are many studies that have been done on these dogs. This is a condition that we've known about for a long time. And uh, the consensus really is that the muscles that control the, the movement of the vocal cords, they atrophy. So they're getting smaller and smaller over time. And the thought is that the nerve that innervates them is dying for some reason. And because of that, the muscle can no longer be supplied, it won't grow and you end up having laryngeal paralysis. The actual cause of the neurologic deterioration is unknown. There is some thought that maybe it's breed related, maybe it's age related, maybe it's hormonal. Um, there have been uh, some association with low thyroid levels in these dogs to cause this. Maybe it's part of a generalized neurologic condition, neurologic weakness called a neuropathy. Um, but we really don't know exactly what it is, but it seems to be that the neuropathy hypothesis is most prevalent at this time. So there is no good way of reversing. In fact, you can't reverse the condition. It can't be cured. And so you end up having to find surgical means to try and keep the airway permanently open. And we, we, there's, there's a handful of procedures actually. And over the years, a lot of these procedures have been kind of dropped out of favor because of the high complication rate. So the most common procedure that we'll perform is called a tie back which is a, a, a retinoid lateralization. And so a retinoid lateralization refers to lateralizing or pulling to the side, one side of the vocal cords, which is called the arytenoid cartilage. It makes up the hyoid apparatus, which is part of the larynx. And so the arytenoid lateralization or the tie back surgery is the most common procedure that surgeons will perform. And it has probably the best outcome overall. It's not ideal. Um, because you are creating a permanent opening in the airway, which of course is not what the, the airway is supposed to be functioning as, right? It's supposed to be opening and closing for a reason. If you're going to eat food or drink water, if these flaps protect you from inhaling your food and water, at the same time, if you want to speak, or if you're a dog, bark, or make any kind of sounds, then um, the, the, your, your voice will sound different. You can't really control the, the airways the way you're supposed to. But considering the alternative, which is, 
most likely death, you kind of don't have a choice. You have to figure out a way to uh, keep the airway open. And so we end up opening one side. And so we do a unilateral or retinoid lateralization. And we perform one side because the risk of pneumonia goes drastically up if you end up opening up both sides at the same time. And the biggest reason why these pets end up succumbing to this disease after surgery is because of pneumonia. And it's because we believe that the pneumonia is caused by accidental inhalation of food or water when they're doing the normal eating and drinking. Or if they ever have any other reason why they would vomit or something after surgery, then they're more likely to inhale the vomit and get pneumonia. So it's, a, it's not a perfect procedure by any means. And you are working with pets that are older. And so they typically have other conditions. They frequently will have heart disease by this time, arthritis, thyroid disease. Um, and so they already have the odds stacked against them. If you combine that with coming to the hospital on an emergency basis in shock and can't breathe, potentially they already have pneumonia, you end up with, and then you have to go into under anesthesia and surgery, then the risks and complications go up. And you can imagine there's a handful of people that are just not gonna do this with their dogs. Um, they'll, they'll consider this a quality of life issue and, and uh, euthanize them. Um, other people, of course, want to try, and I've seen some dogs that recover really nicely from this procedure. I've seen others that, that don't ever recover, and they succumb pretty quickly even after surgery is done successfully and in a timely fashion. There are other procedures um, that also can be performed. Um, I would say probably runner-up to the retinoid lateralization is probably partial retinoidectomy. So that same retinoid cartilage, the one that's, that makes up part of the flap, um, instead of trying to open it up, we'll instead try to cut part of it off to make the opening bigger. And the reason why this is uh, not the ideal procedure is because you are, are risking them to forming scar tissue. It's called laryngeal web or laryngeal scarring. And laryngeal web formation is a complication of a retinoidectomy. If you form scar tissue in that area, then you're more likely to have recurrence of clinical signs, meaning you're not gonna breathe well again once that scar tissue forms. I will frequently perform the, the retinoid, retinoidectomy, a partial retinoidectomy, in conjunction with a retinoid lateralization if I'm not happy with how wide opening my, uh, my, my surgery um, results for the dog. So I will usually use it as an add-on procedure or as a life-saving measure, I won't use it as a sole, sole surgical uh, procedure because it's not, as a, it's not as a consistent in its outcome and you are prone to that complication which you don't typically see with the retinoid lateralization. But um, I have done it before and it has actually made a huge difference in some dogs. Um, if there's any other reason that the airway is being obstructed, like there's a long soft palate, um, or something like that, then of course those things are handled at the same time as the retinoid lateralization. But this is, um, this is basically the best treatment option we have currently. There's, there are some dogs that are so mildly affected you can get away with just medications, which typically involve some kind of a sedative, anti-inflammatory, analgesics. They have pneumonia, you're treating for pneumonia with antibiotics. Um, but most pets that present to us are far too gone to, to avoid surgery. And the um, quality of life, if they can recover from the anesthesia and surgery, can actually be pretty decent. They are not allowed to swim anymore because now anytime they risk inhaling water by accident, whereas normally their airway would have protected them from inhaling water, now they don't have that protection anymore. You have to keep them in cool temperatures so they don't get overheated or, or you have to keep the environment calm so they don't get stressed out or, or too anxious and get them all flared up. The more anxious they get, the more they have to give off heat by panting and breathing heavy and that stresses the surgical site. Um, you could have the, the surgery fail or the cartilage fracture in that make up the, the voice box, which will of course then reverse the whole thing. They should avoid having neck leads, so you want to get a body harness for them instead when you go for walks, that way you don't put pressure on their necks. Um, and then beyond that, you want to try and slow down their eating. So you can use tricks like putting large toys in their doggy dish, that way they have to eat around the toys, it slows them down a little bit. You can put the toys in the water bowl so they don't inhale water so quickly. You're trying to minimize the rate at which they inhale, they, they, they ingest food or drink water, and that way they don't accidentally inhale something um, and causing pneumonia. So like I said, pneumonia is the biggest killer of these dogs. Probably second most common reason why these dogs end up being um, euthanized or dying is because the surgery fails. Because you have older pets that are that are, have weaker cartilage, uh, just nature of being older. And with that, you can't keep the larynx, the surgical site rested because they have to keep breathing. So there's, so there's constant motion on the surgery site, which puts pressure on it and makes it prone to failure. So, so it's, it, it may sound kind of grim, which in, in a lot of cases it ends up being grim. However, if you have the kind of, um, if you're the kind of pet owner that wants to give your dog a chance 
and you understand there's potential for these complications, and if you have an older dog who maybe doesn't have so many comorbidities, meaning other issues that with, with associated with them, then it's a procedure that is worth going for. I'm um, giving it a shot. It's not a more, it's not a very invasive procedure. It's not very painful. The recovery is pretty quick, and you, you expect to see a response, either good or bad, within probably 24 to 48 hours. I hope this helps shed some light on this uh, condition known as laryngeal paralysis. Please leave any comments or questions below, and we'll see you in the next video. This is Dr. Shadia Rafage, surgeon at True Care for Pets, Studio City, Los Angeles. Vet Talks, let's pause for a minute. Thank you.